Lemon Lime, 176 Main Street in Falmouth, 508-457-4700. Lemon Lime. Founder Abraham Penn taught a valuable lesson that has been part of a tradition since 1919 when he said, I'd rather make a friend than make a sale. For more than 90 years, Puritan has been making friends as a unique family-owned company right here in Cape Cod. At Puritan Cape Cod on 199 Main Street, as well as Chatham, Mashpee, and Hyannis, you'll find the latest in men's and women's clothing, as well as ski and tennis equipment, and much more. Puritan Cape Cod, 548-0116 or puritancapecod.com.
Good evening. The uh, selectmen have just been um, working in executive session, and we are now returning to open session. So I will ask if you would join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we have two announcements tonight. And uh, the first one is going to take precedence over any business of the town because it is so awesome and we are so happy. And Doug is going to tell you about it, not that you don't already know. I understand there are many people who were up in Boston yesterday to watch the Falmouth High School girls hockey team take on Wellesley in a fantastic game that went to overtime. Falmouth won the state championship in a 3-2 game. We have 10 seniors on the team and the board just wanted to express appreciation for the fans who went and congratulations for that team who represented the town so well and what I heard was a really fantastic game of hockey that went back and forth and uh, so congratulations to that team and the coaches and players. Uh, the second announcement I'm going to make is uh, a vote that was taken tonight in executive session. And uh, first, I want to say that um, Selectman Moffat is not here tonight. Um, she had another obligation. So there are four of us are meeting tonight. Uh, but the board met in executive session, and uh, we voted unanimously to petition the Supreme Judicial Court for further appellate review of the decision of the appellate court. And now we're going to move to public comment. Is there anyone who would like to speak under public comment? Uh, Ron, as you know, uh, our policy is two minutes per individual. Thank you. Um, uh, my name is Ron Zweig, and I'm the uh, representative to the Cape Light Compact and uh, for the town on the Board of Governors of the Cape Light Compact. And we all know we've all been seeing our electric bills going up radically because of uh, because of whatever reasons, because of high gas costs and, and provision of natural gas for generation. And um, the Cape Light Compact has a lot of energy efficiency programs to which I, the, the board uh, and the town uh, might be interested in, in looking into further. There's, I'm going to leave this little pamphlet outside about residential uh, projects that have to do with all sorts of energy needs within the home and conservation. And there's a phone number that you can call for an energy audit and they'll come into your house and change light bulbs and other things and it's 800-797-6699 so I encourage you to call just to see if you can take advantage of this uh, th these services are paid for through our electric bills and therefore there's uh, oftentimes little cost or there are large subsidies I'd also like to make an announcement that last at the last board meeting last Wednesday the the uh, board of uh, directors of the compact voted $450,000 to the town of Falmouth for, uh, for the ESCO project, the energy services contract project. That will reduce the cost from about 579000 to 434, depending, thousands. So, uh, and this, the savings are about $100,000 um, $100, a year more or less in terms of that and these this project is being implemented in virtually all the school public schools in Falmouth as well as the uh, East Falmouth Library the police station the rec center and the school school administration uh, building as well as town hall so uh, this is a huge advantage it's, it's going to make a huge electricity savings to the town and uh, anyway thank you I thank you Ron is there anyone else who would like to speak Andy Probably not. <laughs> uh, Aidan Dufresne, I'm speaking as a representative of Precinct 2, and my, uh, my subject tonight is the parking meters in Falmouth Heights that have been in effect all winter. Uh, I did approach uh, a member of the board uh, a few months ago to ask why, uh, for the first time in many, many, many years, if you know, going back maybe 30 years, that these parking meters were not removed from the ball field. It is the only ball field in the town of Falmouth that has parking meters, and the parking meters were to control the summer traffic. However, that ball field is used for people that bring their children to sled, 
for men's softball, for many other activities of the citizens of the town of Falmouth. I do believe that the Board of Selectmen should consider the same for Falmouth Heights as they just recently did for the people of Woods Hole. And uh, I, I didn't want to bring it up as this, but since I read the article of, of your uh, uh, concession to the Woods Hole community, Falmouth Heights ball field, that is not the public way, that those meters are, if you look at the maps, on a ball field, and they should not be metered in the off season. Thank you, Randy. Anybody else? Yes, all right. Uh, good evening, esteemed board and staff. I'm Marie Younger Blackburn with uh, Falmouth Wants a Why. I'm here in representation of uh, the grassroots organization, Falmouth Wants a Why. We are uh, bringing a community information meeting to the Falmouth Public Library on March 26, it's a Thursday, between 6 and 8 p.m. Uh, for the purposes of information uh, gathering for uh, members of the town and yourselves. And I'd like to personally invite you all to come out to hear what's going on to date and to put, give some input into uh, the process. So we hope you all will be in attendance. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Murray. Now, in, in, my, in my one minute, uh, my name is Steve Clay from 191 Bayfront Way. And the YMCA is a charitable, not-for-profit, community-based organization whose primary purpose is to offer programs that build strong kids, strong families, and strong communities. It's in over 10,000 communities throughout the United States, and it serves about 45 million people in 100 other countries around the world. One of the benefits for a group like this to be associated with the Y is that there are models to follow that hopefully, if followed and followed well, will result in programs that are sustainable over many, many years and finances that are also sustainable over that same period of time. And under the guidance of the YMCA of the USA, the volunteers have been doing research on programs. And as a result, they've opened up a daycare center at the uh, North Falmouth uh, Congregational Church. There will soon be a diabetes prevention program in conjunction with the service center. Thank you. And uh, if you come on the 26th, you can hear the results of the research that's been done, and most importantly, uh, to offer some feedback that would be very helpful in the planning process going forward. Thank you. All right, thank you. Is there anybody else under public comment? No. No? Okay. Hearing none, we'll move on to the minutes of the meeting of March 2nd. The public session. Madam Chair, yeah. my first is on page six. Uh, under the you know, precinct voting location recommendations, under the last paragraph, where task members were allowed to comment on their bullets. The third bullet is per Mr. Hall, and the, I believe that's um, Mr. Palmer. Same thing in the fourth, the Mr. Hall should be Mr. Palmer. And in the fifth bill, the Mr. Hall should be Mr. Palmer. So I'd move to make those changes. And then on where is it? Uh, page 10, on the bold, uh, the, the motion was to authorize the planning board to serve as the Falmouth Local Housing Partnership. Right. Adding the word housing. Well, adding the word housing between okay. local and partnership. Those are my changes. Anybody else? Uh, many, many, many pages. Sam? Uh, yes, I would move it on page three, the very last word. I said, said has to do with riprap. It said it is a fairly low groin and it can easily be, it says replanted. I think that's repaired. Right? Okay. So there's a rock. It would be repaired. Sweet Structures. Yeah. Let's see. Is that it? Yep. Thank you. Okay. So with those corrections and additions, I move approval of the minutes. Second. Any Our further second. discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. And then we have the minutes of the executive session of March 2nd. For the wind turbine discussion? Litigation on the wind turbine discussion. Ah, uh, yes. And, um, why are there two? There we had two different. We had the two wind turbine different. and the several of the personal. Oh, train. okay. Oh, so let's take this. We have to hold that one anyway. Right. I had given some corrections to the separate. Same. Right. 
Oh, you had? Okay. Did you get those? Okay. So I would move that we actually hold both of those until next week so we can see the amendments. Uh, the settlement personal injury claim, most of us received the draft version. And so I think we need to hold those until for approval until next week, until next meeting. That's Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, now we'll move to the summary of actions. And the first is um, an application for a one day liquor <coughs> license for neighborhood Falmouth, Highfield Hall and Gardens, um, May 8th, 2015. Approve an application for a one day liquor, liquor license, the Real Cape Music Festival, Cape Cod Fairgrounds, August 1st, 2015. And the application for a new inholder license, the Captain Tom Lawrence House Inn at 75 Locust Street, Falmouth. I would move approval of the three licenses. Second. Any Madam discussion? Madam. Yes. Madam Chair, uh, I got a, a message that on the Captain Tom Lawrence house in that uh, this should be moved to the 330. Did you know? That there, there's not a complete application in our pack? No, I do know what I said. Oh, yeah. So I would like to see us amend that to just approve that. the first two. Then let's amend the motion. I will withdraw my motion and make a new motion to approve the applications for the two one-day liquor licenses for okay. Neighborhood Found within the Real Cape Music Festival. Okay. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. And a motion to extend or continue the um, new inholder license for the Captain Town Lawrence House in until March 30th. So moved. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. administrative orders approve payment of an invoice in the amount of 4400 for the sandwich road field project from the recreation department donation account authorize the town manager to sign the msba town of falmouth project funding agreement for the lawrence middle school project and approve the memorandum of understanding for the town of falmouth and falmouth together we can for the falmouth skate park a point of order on the uh, Together we can. Falmouth Skate Park. I just want to, want to hold them. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, I will move approval of the payment of the invoice of four thousand four hundred dollars for the Sandwich Road Field Project, and authorize the town manager to sign the MSBA Town of Falmouth Project Funding Agreement. This is not actually doing the funding, but just signing the agreement, or if the funding does come through, what the stipulations are. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Unanimous. So let's go back to tell you this project, this skateboard project, is really something. So I'm glad you held it because I think it's worth um, a discussion. So you were the one who held it. I held it uh, for two reasons. One, I just saw Sandy Cooney from Falmouth Together We Can come in. <coughs> and I just want to make note that I do, and in the past have done some legal work for Falmouth Together We Can that has nothing specifically to do with this. Um, with the Falmouth Skate Park, uh, but I, and it's, I, I don't think it prevents me from voting, but I just wanted to make that public statement. And maybe if you could just give a little synopsis about the skate park. Because I know you love public speaking. <laughs> Sandy Cuny, Chairman of the Falmouth Recreation Committee, and I'm the Treasurer of Falmouth Together We Can Incorporate. The skate park has been under our umbrella since the first skate park was built on at Trotting Park Fields. We raised money for the first park, and now this was a new group that has raised funds to make a new and better park, and it will be amazing. They have over $240,000. They are ready to get started, so we're just waiting on the uh, MOU to be signed, <coughs> and then we can move forward. Thank you. Um, Heather? Just, this is an important vote for the board to take. It will allow the um, Together We Can to execute a letter of intent with the Community Preservation Fund, who's funding a um, significant portion of the, of the park. Um, so this is a really important first step, and that allows them to move forward. Sam? Oh, when we say that the 
Community Preservation Committee is funding this, we are funding it through their stewardship uh, because it's our tax dollars that are actually funding the community preservation um, projects that come before them. So uh, thank you to all of, all of Falmouth uh, for this contribution to the recreational assets of this town. Uh, Dave, um, Doug. Uh, two things I was impressed by. One is the memorandum of understanding. I think is an excellent model for other things like this in the future, mm -hmm. that we have something like this in place. So when other organizations are going to do anything like this, we already have that set in. And it's just a, one of the most impressive projects I've seen uh, with the detail of it, uh, the level of, you know, I think it's going to be a very attractive park. The fact that they've taken uh, additional parking into contact, into a consideration with it. Um, it's just, a, I think it's going to be a fantastic project, and I want to congratulate the Together We Can organization for putting this forward. And I would move approval of the Memorandum of Understanding of the Town of Falmouth and the Falmouth Together We Can. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Congratulations. Yes, good job, guys. Okay, on special events, we have a request for a special event from the Unitarian Universalist Church, a vigil to remember the Civil Rights March. It will be held at Pagnonia Park on March 21st. I move approval. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Please put it on your calendars. Mm -hmm. It's from 1.30. Oh, well, the setup is at 1.30. The event starts at 2, uh, from 2 to 3 on Saturday, March 21st at Pagnonia. We have just a few more minutes before the public hearing. So I'm going to ask that we take up Michael Ward. Are you here? Daniel Ward. Daniel Ward, I mean. There he is. Um, we have a request from Daniel Ward for an additional 7.4 acre extension <laughs> to the 2.6 acres that are currently licensed for aquaculture, which increases this area to 10 acres, which is now allowed by the state and encouraged, I might say. You might want to comment on that. So the applicant has now obtained the required surveys and reports for the modification of the license. And they have, all that uh, documents have been provided to us. So, Dan, the floor is yours. Um, yes, I, I'm Daniel Ward, Falman. And um, so, uh, as Chairwoman explained, I came before you in uh, November of 2013 and uh, initiated the 7.4 acre extension. Um, I was actually in discussions before that uh, in terms of what the regulations were and how they're interpreted and, and we went back and forth. Um, but eventually in, in October, um, we came to a conclusion. And so in November, I asked for a 7.4 acre extension. The Division of Marine Fisheries came out in May and uh, surveyed the entire 7.4 acres. They found no oysters, no scallops, and I think it was three clams in, in 7.4 acres. It's something very low. It's something that the level that um, the director decided was at a, a, a uh, below the commercial threshold for shellfish in that area. Um, and after which that after that point, I went through all the rest of the litany of local, state, and federal agencies to get approval, of which all approved, or so no reason why it shouldn't expand, and the list is in the attachments that, of the packet that you have. And, uh, and so I come back before you today for a final approval to be able to expand. And um, I'd just like to say throughout this process, through in, over the last two years, um, a couple years ago I came before the board, and there was a comment about buoys and uh, how there's no town plan as far as how to mark aquaculture cages and that type of thing. And so uh, the Conservation Commission and the Harbor Master's Office came together and drafted regulations for that. And, um, and what they ask is for annually each farmer to submit a plan of marking. And so it's no more than four buoys per acre, which I think is more than fair. And uh, additionally, the corner yellow marker buoys, which is what I currently use and is the state standard across Massachusetts. And um, as well, one area marking a navigational hazard in the shallowest section of the site, which I follow all of those, so. Mm -hmm. I just want to comment that Dr. Ward came before the EDIC and gave a terrific presentation, um, which the EDIC perceived as very 
upbeat in terms of um, jobs in Falmouth and, and sustainability and things that are good for the environment. And I, I think it's just worth noting that Dr. Wood has been a pioneer in terms of the procedure with the, the recent changes. And they're, they're just, there's piles of paperwork that he just kind of does himself. And, and I think that, and he's also often, he not only does presentations, but I, you know, just in terms of getting other people involved. And, and with the further challenge that the areas that are designated aren't really the ultimate best, you know, shellfish growing places. I mean, there are, um, maybe if you could just give one minute on that, because I think this is a fast moving and exciting, you know, new venture and in a way it could be expandable and I, I just think it's worth noting. Well, where I farm currently is in McGansett and um, it's a, it's a, good but not great spot I guess I would say uh, there's good food there's good amount of food um, there's high salinity which is good it keeps disease down um, it's accessible I can get there from Fiddler's Cove over the boat ramp so there's a lot of good things about it but it's not nearly as good as aquaculture would be if I was in one of the salt ponds because the salt ponds you know as I think we all know are <laughs> highly eutrophied which in many ways is a problem and you have to sewer to get around that but in all honesty, when I see a eutrophied water source that's not polluted by E. coli or fecal coliform, what I see is a wasted resource because that's food for my oysters, you know? So if I was in there, my oysters would be growing quicker, it would be cleaning up the estuary, so that's really where I should be. Um, there's a lot of hurdles associated with that and, uh, and different reasons why I'm in McGansett instead of the estuaries, but, um, you know, I, I am interested in seeing if we can proceed whether it's some kind of mixed model with the, with the town and private, or if it's all private or all done, whatever it happens to be, I'm just interested in proceeding and seeing how we can expand in the estuaries more. Thank you. I, I have a question relative to navigating those areas. If you're a boater, mm -hmm. I assume you have to stay away from that 7.4 acres and... Nope, no, no, what's, not at all. Well, what's what's the deepest draft boat that can cross your cages, which are two feet high, and you say you can stack them? Well, they're 18 inches, so the, the cage itself is 24 inch, but they sink into the sand six inches, so yep. if you don't put six inch feet on them, what happens is all your oysters on the bottom <laughs> shelf die, because they, they do sink in like six inches. So they're 18 inches, that's the max, according to Army Corps regulations, okay. it's 18 inches. And the shallowest section of my site is about 10 feet, so... You know, you'd have to have, I mean, if you're in there with a boat that draws seven feet or eight feet in, uh, in that close in McGansett, I think you got other problems with rocks and things. That, right. <laughs> Thank you. My cage is at least the problem. But even, even to go further is, is deeper out in the water. So even if you say that the draft of the boat is, in the, you, there's zero chance that you're ever going to run into my cage. But there are buoys, vertical buoys in the water column marking that. And I've gotten questions about that before is, oh, we must need to stay away and don't go near it. And no, I mean, you can go out there on a day in July and August with people zipping, you know, cruising in between the buoys. It's perfectly fine. They're just like a lobster trap buoy. So as long as you steer around it, I mean, there's no, there's no harm at all. It's just like any other market buoy. Thank you. Any other questions? I just want to applaud Dr. Ward for <laughs> sticking through all the paperwork that is being created as he's going through the process. Right. It isn't just the paperwork that's already out there. It's things are then coming up because you're asking the questions. And for the right reasons, though, so, right. so yeah. Yeah, right. I appreciate that. <coughs> I would move approval of the, I guess this is the final approval of the Shelfers Aquacultural License for Daniel Ward and McGansett Harbor. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Good luck, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now um, I'd like to read a public notice because um, this next item is a public hearing. And it um, has to do with a road taking and a betterment hearing for White Pine Lane. So in accordance with section 22 of chapter 82 and chapter 80 of the Massachusetts General Laws, <coughs> the Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Monday, March 16th, 2015 at 7.30 in the Selectmen's Meeting Room, Falmouth Town Hall, to consider the layout of White Pine Lane, which is 650 feet and to vote as a town way, and to vote any betterment assessments. So any person interested or wishing to be heard on the proposed layout and taking of this road or wishing to be heard on betterments 
to property owners receiving a benefit of the improvements to the roadway described should appear and at the time of, at the time and place designated, which is here tonight at this time. Preliminary plans of the proposed layout of the above named road and betterment estimates will be available for public viewing in the office of the town clerk, Falmouth Town Hall, 59 Town Hall Square, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. for order of the selectmen. Um, so, would you like to speak on behalf of the project? Uh, sure. Can I put this one up? Sure, would that be okay? Yeah, do you have uh, other tax up there? Excuse me? Yes. Your house, okay. I think this would give you a better idea Hi, my name is Joni Favreau, and I live on White Pine Lane. We've had the home since 1987. And I want to start off with thanking um, Madam Chairman, Board of Selectmen, the uh, town managers for allowing me to come up and, and talk. Now, as far as um, we're discussing the betterment tonight, and the reason that I'm coming, um, Ms. Hopper sent me this packet and um, asked me to read it, and I did. And I came across the non-betterment petition. Um, it's on the second page, and it says, those petitions not willing to pay 100% of the costs associated with the road taking process, including repair and reconstruction of the roadway, will be added to the list of 100 peti petitions for taking at full cost to the town. Where, okay. where are you now? Okay, I'm on uh, now I'm number three. I'm gonna read it number three. 100% betterment petitions. Those petition is seeking road taking under 100% betterment will be added to the list. Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry, it's number two. Um, getting a little nervous, I'm sorry. Um, for the full cost of the town, the only roads that are taken at full cost to the town provide a public benefit for access or public safety and are not neighborhood roads. The, the thing that with this road is, if you look at the map here, can I take this? Mm -hmm. uh, this is Sandwich Road, and this is towards downtown. And this is White Pine Lane. It only has 10 homes on it. This is where the traffic is coming from. There's about 40 homes, plus a couple of homes with 24 men in it. And the reason why everybody wants to use this road including like fire, um, at, you know, um, fire engines and flatbed trucks, oil trucks. They all want to use this because it's a straight road and they don't have to go through all these mazes in order to get to this section right here. So with all this traffic going through this road, we've been trying since 1973 to, to have this road taken if it was taken back then instead of being indefinitely postponed, it would have cost a lot less than 142000 So we're um, So what we, we want to do is we feel that if it is that if we have to pay 100% of it, it's only 11 homes um, that are on this street that are providing access for about 40 plus homes uh, in the area, which we think is really unfair to put a burden like that on this road. Not to mention that it really looks like the street was bombed. Um, it's, it's a mess um, and it's more added because the town um, in the 1980s paved half of the road and stuff, which they said clearly was because of uh, drainage. There's a picture downstairs that shows water t from the top. And the water, the drainage problems are starting from 
Lakeshore Drive at the top of the hill, not in the middle of the street. So this all has to be redone, um, obviously, for, for those reasons. Now, I, I really uh, would like, I know that the town, um, uh, the selectmen have had a really bad problem with um, even mentioning that it would be less than 100%. Um, that, um, but we would like a discussion um, about it. <coughs> and hopefully you could see our dilemma on, um, it's not a rich street. Um, we're all working class or reti mostly retired. And we would really appreciate the help with um, getting this road done. We've had so many, um, we had two of the storms, the trash wouldn't come down even when they said they would because the road was in such bad shape with all the ice because of the flow from the top. Um, we watched um, an oil truck many times um, throughout the year with its content sloshing back and forth. You can hear the heating oil literally sloshing back and forth. In fact, I mentioned it downstairs last week to the head of the DEP, saying that it would be a shame if anything should tip over because of this and go into the protective beds that are um, on the other side of the road. Um, I guess the town owns some of those um, beds. That, I guess it's frogs that the, that the environment protection is um, protecting these, these, this little lot of land. So um, and not only that, the other safety issues are we have two special needs buses going through that are trying to navigate through these roads. We also have a uh, gas line that in November, Mr. McConaughey reported to you in the meeting, the selectmen's meeting after the November warrant um, that it was within six inches. And that is before all this rain and all the plowing and all the road mud and everything. So I don't even know how I'm going to have them come out again, the gas company, to see just how <coughs> close it is to the road this time. Um, we really feel that reason why the town meeting members um, we were, I obviously wouldn't be here tonight if it wasn't for their vote in November. Um, but I think they, they saw with my presentation um, how, how much we need this done, finally, um, after being asked 1973, 1975, and so on. I have the annual reports uh, right here. So, um, any questions? No. no, I'd just like to make a few statements. So, uh, did you have questions? No. Okay. All right, I want to make a few statements about the betterment. Okay. Um, because I happened to be on the board in 1998. And um, there were a number of people in town who lived on private roads because we have something like 868 private roads in the town, more private roads than public <coughs> roads. And uh, they wanted their roads improved. And we understood that. So what we did is we filed legislation with the uh, State House to be able to create an account so that if the town, in the beginning, appropriated enough money into that account so that we could begin to accept the private roads, as long as the petitioners were willing to, to pay 100% of the betterment. That was the criteria back in 1998. And in 2000, the board began the negotiations with people on private roads. And I think since then, we have done, we have done 33 petitions since 1998. The reason we can't do more is that the town has to pay the money up front. So if it's 1 million or 2 million or 3 million, the town has to fund that and pay for it. And then the homeowners pay it back. They have the option of paying it back on the betterment of either in one, uh, one payment or in 
three payments, or they can spread it out for 20 years. So it's a long time before the town gets its money back, and that's why we've never had sufficient funds in the program to keep doing it on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And the procedure was that anyone who wished to petition uh, to have their private road taken by the town had to be willing to pay 100% of the betterment. And every single homeowner on every road that we have taken, <coughs> all 33 since then, have paid 100% of the betterment. Mm -hmm. And there was a process for doing that. And the process was to come before the board uh, and the board would hear their petition and then if we had the funds available or if we had the funds that we could appropriate that given year, sometimes that's what we have had to do is appropriate a town meeting to pay for it so then the homeowners could pay it back over a course of time. So, um, and with uh, all your chutzpah, I must say, you decided that you weren't going to wait for that process so you went directly to town meeting which yeah. is really the end of the process. So you started at the beginning. I mean, you made town meeting the beginning, and they're still come at the end. And town meeting did vote to um, move the process forward mm -hmm. for you. And they said, no, start with White Pine Lane, do mm -hmm. it. Even though there are other people in the queue that are waiting, you took precedence over them. So, but that doesn't mean that the the betterment will change okay. because the board was very clear about the 100% betterment and if we were to change that betterment for one homeowner we would probably have to go back and change it for all the other 33 people over the uh, since 1998 who have paid 100% betterment for their roads so with that in mind because that's really the crux of the discussion it's not so much as the town willing to accept the road and take on the, um, the repairs to bring it up to code, mm -hmm. but also is to, is with the Board of Selectmen has to vote the betterment. The other thing I might add is that the roads that have been done uh, have varying um, features to them. Um, White Pine Lane is considered a sub-collector road, meaning that there are other roads that people use White Pine Lane to get to, mm -hmm. or there are other people who are on other roads that use White Pine Lane to exit and go somewhere else. But that is not an unusual feature. Okay. There are many roads that are sub-collector roads. There are some roads that were collector roads. And this is the DPW definition of what roads really are. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I'm going to... Um, I'm going to, before we, the board gets into a discussion, I'm going to ask if there's anybody in the audience who would like to speak in favor of this petition. Uh, yes. Oh, well, can you come to the microphone, please? I'm a neighbor on White Pine as well, and <coughs> I am with Joni, behind Joni, with, um, with her planning and trying to get the vote. So is, one, is your home one of the ones that will be improved with the... Do you live on White Pine Lane? Yeah. You do? On the dirt side, yeah. Okay. And I think one of the biggest issues is half of the road is paved, and those neighbors um, do, do not really want to pay the betterment because they already have a paved road. So it's hard, and it's the majority of the road that is paved. Okay, so... Yeah, I'm Joni's husband, okay. Dave, Dave Favreau, and I, everything Joni and uh, Luann said is absolutely 100% true. You know, uh, if we have to do the 100% betterment, I'm in favor of it, you know, and we'll pay our fair share. Um, if that's the way it is, it is. It's, it's in, it, the street looks like a street in Baghdad. It was just bond. I mean, it's brutal. People break their shocks, their tires, their frames. It's ridiculous. I've seen the ambulances try to come down there. They can't even make it. So, you know, anything it can do for us, We'd appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of this proposal? Is there anyone who would like to speak against it? Mr. Dufresne. Uh, Adrian Dufresne, uh, you know, a number of years ago I sat where you people sat <coughs> and, and we talked about betterments and I think it would be a very dangerous precedent for the Board of Selectmen to entertain uh, waving from the uh, original 100% uh, 
betterment. Uh, I think uh, it would behoove the board to probably tell the audience uh, uh, the financial impact over a 20-year period on each household, because that's really a, a near insignificant number when you talk about the increase in valuations of the property on that on that street. And uh, I, I feel great that we're finally going to fix the street for these people, but I think uh, to, for your board to waive uh, that 100% betterment would not be in the best interest of the town of Falmouth. That would set a very dangerous precedent. Thank you, Mr. Dupree. Is there anybody else who would like to speak in opposition to the 100% betterment that is? With all due respect. Uh, oh, no, he's, he's leaving. leaving. No, I'm, I'm asking for people who want to speak yes, in opposition. Okay. So if you could just oh, sure. hold on. Anybody? Okay. Heather, I'm going to give Heather just an opportunity. Couple, a, a couple of comments. And I, I have a slide that shows all of the remaining private ways, if that's something the board is interested in seeing, but you have that in your packet as well. Um, I wanted to just respond to the inquiry from Mr. Dufresne, which is the cost. Every abutter on White Pine Lane received the notice of this evening's meeting along with a letter um, from the town manager outlining the costs, or the potential costs, uh, based on the board's discussion. And there's really two votes before the board. The one is the layout of the road, which is the taking of the road. The second is who pays, and that's the betterment. So there's two different issues here, and I think there's not really any concern about the um, taking of the road. Really, the issues revolve around the betterment. The betterment would involve all of the abutters <coughs> from Lakeshore Drive down to Sandwich Road, so anyone on that road would be in included in the betterment, um, not just those on the dirt and not just those on the, the paved. It's the entire 760-foot length, and they have all received notices or they've been sent uh, notices. Um, in terms of what the betterment cost is, um, the 100% property owner betterment on $142,000 for 11 property owners is $12,909 a year um, and paid over 20 years. That's $645 a year paid uh, on your tax bill as a betterment, and that's the, the impact um, to any individual property owner of the 100% uh, betterment model. The board also has a variety of criteria that the staff put together um, for you to consider in taking um, in considering the betterment uh, percentage, um, and I'm happy to answer any questions about that. Yeah, does any, uh, Stan? Yes, uh, could you tell me what the balance is in our Falmouth Betterment Fund right now? I don't know the balance, but what is there is reserved to make improvements to Elizabeth Jean Drive, which was taken uh, about a year ago now, and it's still waiting to have their improvements done. <laughs> Follow. So what that means is even if we and town meeting were to vote approval on this, there could be a, a wait before that fund has enough dollars in it to actually pay for this construction. I think we, we're planning to appropriate the funds for this town meeting. At this article. town meeting. Okay. All right, but that's my question. There might be a delay just for that fund to come up with 142000 We Might be appropriate. Oh, I see appropriated. So raise and appropriate the funds from whatever sources, right. tax payer, t taxpayers dollars essentially. But right. taxpayers dollars it will be paid back, right. and then we'll go into the fund for other roads in the future. So essentially, what we're doing is raising the limit on the betterment fund. Then. Yeah, it's separate. She jumped fifty people that are in that fund because of the needs and the persuasiveness of town meeting. I'm sorry if I may, and so this will be a separate. Fund. It's not, they're two different things. Because it, of town meeting vote. Is that, a, is no, that the correct interpretation or? The, the source of funds recommended for White Pine Lane is not the 100% betterment program. It is to raise and appropriate those funds, and we're recommending $142,000 from um, available funds for this purpose, which will allow the process to move forward as soon as um, the resources are available to do so. If I may, just wanted to make a couple of cor corrections. Um, Chairman Flynn did an excellent job going back to the beginning on this much more briefly than I did, so thank you. Um, there have been 52 roads taken under the 100% um, betterment program, totaling over 13 miles of roadway, and the town has expended over $2 million uh, on private ways to make that happen. I think that's important. There are 33 petitions remaining on Fine. file Fine. waiting to be taken. And where would the betterments that got paid go? Would those go into the yes. betterment fund? fund? They would. So in, it is, in a sense, 
increasing our betterment fund Correct. by over $142,000. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's and I understand, <coughs> except unfortunately the end is much slower than the out. Yes. Right. Uh, uh, just another point to make, I mean, essentially we're saying we're going to take 142000 out of the reserves of the town when we're sp facing $1.4 million increase in the cost of snow removal this year. I mean, I, I think we have to be careful that we're not too cavalier about just simply allocating these kinds of funds when we have many, many, many needs in the town. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Okay, just, it's not a, but, uh, it's not a trivial matter. I know, but okay. we've been waiting since 1973. I understand that. And, um, and you're not, you're not the only And I think that's person. why the town meeting members saw <coughs> the injustice of us waiting so long. Agreed. Um, much more than what's on the list. Yeah. And, and if I may respond, I mean, I certainly understand in fact, I think I've driven a bus down that road. I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know how bad it is. But certainly it's an access road to many, many families. In oh, many. Uh, there's yeah. 40 homes just in the immediate area, just here. Yeah. There's 40 homes. For sure. And, uh, and, and there's, some of the houses have a lot of um, occupants in, in those homes. So um, we've been hammered um, for many, many years. And I, I just honestly just couldn't stand it anymore and just got everything together that I could to make, make you see that what we are so, why, why we're, I'm kind of adamant about getting this done. But um, Okay, well, I think we need to get back to our discussion. Okay. May um, I take this down? Sure. I mm -hmm. just want to say Yeah, that. you can. Yeah, you can take okay? it down. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so, so. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And just one more point in terms of the numbers, the, the actual, so the cost that Heather mentioned is $12,909, and, oh, you know, that, the property values for these homes are going to be raised at least double that, I would bet an expert would say. So there are, the homeowners do get a tremendous value when the road is improved. And you, you can you immediately get that back in your pocket in terms of the valuation of your home. Maybe Steve would be a better one to, to guesstimate that. But this is, that's another part of the consideration of why all of these homes have, you know, historically been 100%. Should we close the hearing? Yeah, is there anyone else who wishes to speak? I would move to close the hearing. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Uh, All right. Opposed? Unanimous. Yes, right. well, yeah, Heather, I would move did you want to say something? I uh, think Heather wants to make I do, and I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, the board um, <coughs> needs to hold the, the hearing open for seven days, or may not take a vote for seven days after the hearing. Oh, that's the Betterment or the layout? On both. On both. Yes, it's a single hearing, so you'll have to make a, a motion um, at your next meeting. Uh, okay. So we will then make a motion to hold the hearing open for another seven days. Correct. And During which time we can receive written correct. Co correspondence on this issue. Okay. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 aye folks. Unanimous. So any of those of you here or at home, if you have comments, please provide them to us in writing, either by email or regular mail. Thank you. Um, okay. I'm going to take a recess because I got to throw up. We're going to take a short recess.